Hello students, welcome back to Science Craft. Here is another recap lecture of what we talked about today in class. So the topic of the day was the engineering design process, which is a very exciting, uh, it's formulaic process where this is how engineers come up with new ideas and improve on existing ideas and really just how they do their job. It's very easy uh, without this kind of process in mind to skip steps and make mistakes that you'll look back on and regret. So it's always good to be aware of things like the engineering design process, scientific method, and so on. Anyway, to get started, what is the engineering design process? So it is a series of steps that engineers use to help solve a problem. And it is cyclical. It starts with ask, it ends with improve, but it also restarts at ask and ends again at improve. And it's a never ending cycle over time. But it's a nice defined way to solve whatever problem you have by creating some sort of product or solution. So throughout the slideshow, we're going to use this example prompt. You live in a world where the only writing instrument is a pen. However, you want to design an instrument where you can remove mistakes you make when writing. Now, obviously you're immediately thinking of a pencil here, right? But we are existing in a world before pencils where all you have is pens. And when people write, they make a mistake, they have to scribble it out or they have to use whiteout or something like that. So perhaps not the most ideal thing. So now you, an engineer, are set out to try and solve this problem. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to ask questions. You always want to consider these preliminary questions when you're trying to solve a problem. You know, what is the problem? What do we want to design? Who is it for? What are we trying to accomplish? What are the project requirements? What are the limitations? And so on. And this allows us to get kind of the scope of our solution. We don't want something that's way too broad. We don't want something that's too niche and narrow so nobody will use it. And so you want to define these kind of parameters. For the pencil uh, or this pencil instrument that you are going to design, uh, perhaps you want to think of it as an alternative to a pen. You want it to solve the problem of the pen not being able to erase itself uh, and therefore taking up more space on the paper. And you want to accomplish uh, basically the creation of a very similar instrument to a pen. So let's look at research here. That is the next step of our process. So research is important because it would really suck if you came up with this great idea and then you realize it already exists and someone already found out that it's just not going to work. So you always want to look into existing solutions. You always want to talk to people who have expertise in the field that you're trying to solve. And you want to look for technologies that might already be useful so you don't have to go, you know, reinvent the wheel every time you do something. So think about our pencil scenario. Uh, with this instrument, you might want to consult a material scientist and say, hey, is there a material that I can erase? Uh, but it's still, you know, permanent when I write it on paper, unless given that eraser. Uh, and then for existing solutions, you know, erasable pens, well, they exist, but there's, uh, they smear and there's obvious problems with them. So how can we improve on those? Uh, whiteout. Uh, whiteout exists, but what are the disadvantages of whiteout that we can create in this new product that'll make it more convenient and easier? Your next step is to take this information you've acquired from the previous steps, and you want to now basically just come up with all your wild ideas until your team can settle on one. And you might want to make some sketches, try to picture what your product is. And this is, you want to really just, no matter how absurd your idea sounds, you want to uh, think, you know, can it work? What are the downsides and so on? So we see here, we've got, you know, kind of a pencil you might be familiar with and this double tipped pencil. So at first this seems like it's a good idea, but then, you know, this has an eraser on it. So maybe that's your better idea. Now, once you've kind of settled on one thing to work on, you need to revisit everything and you need to plan in detail. So you need to uh, draw out a blueprint, you need to make measurements, you need to calculate cost. Uh, things, these kind of things are important before you build because if you make mistakes in the planning process, well, if you're already building it, you can't exactly go back on it, which is going to be an issue. All right, next up, you finally get to create your prototype. Of course, a prototype is the early version of your final design, and you'll likely create more than one prototype. 
but what you want to do is you want to really push yourself to be creative and innovative with how you create uh, whatever you create. You want to document your process so you know how to recreate what you made. And, you know, in our example, hopefully you've ended up creating a pencil. Of course, that's really cool, but does it work? Uh, you need to run a series of tests. You want to do durability tests to make sure that it lasts over a long period of time. You want to really stretch the limits of your product and see, okay, this might not be normal use, but what if someone does do this? We don't want them to be breaking it. Uh, you want to make sure it's very tolerant. Uh, and so there's so many things, and it's really specific to the product you design that you should test. Obviously, with the pencil, you want to test, you know, how good is it at erasing? Uh, what if we used a uh, material besides graphite or rubber? And uh, really just think you already want to be in the mindset of, okay, what can I improve? Which is our next step. And so you want to think, you always want to be thinking with an improvement mindset. You might have some sort of genius design for this pencil in mind, but I guarantee you that in the future, someone will probably make it better. And so you want to be the one making that better. So continue to make revisions. Continue to think about how you can improve it. And then this is where you go all the way back to the ask step. And now you now you have this pencil, but you want to ask, you know, how can I make it better? And maybe you'll end up with a mechanical pencil. And, you know, there's so many variations of pencils, and all of these were designed through the engineering design process. So that is our steps of the engineering design process. You can see it's pretty it's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. It's it makes sense, you know? Uh, so to review, I have a second example here. This is something that a couple of students from the science craft team, uh, one of them being me, uh, designed for a science fair slash uh, innovation sort of thing. And we ended up winning. So that was pretty cool. But basically, we're going to go. This is how we went through the steps. The first thing we did is we identified a problem. So we identified the fact that we live in the Antelope Valley. It's a very windy area, and trash cans are always being knocked over. And then you get trash going everywhere. You get, you know, just a very unpleasing environment because litter is never a good thing. It ruins the natural habitat. You know, there's so many problems with it. However, uh, we didn't see a good solution. So we researched. We did find some existing solutions like this belt here or the use of bungee cords by homeowners to keep their trash cans shut. But... That's really inconvenient because now your garbage man has to uh, take those straps off before actually emptying the garbage into the truck. And so that was one of the considerations in our ask phase is how can we make this compatible with a garbage truck while also being easy for the homeowner and, of course, fulfilling the task of keeping the trash in the trash can even when it falls over. So in our imagine step, we have some uh, really high quality drawings here. This was like the first thing we drew. And... It's uh, sort of an arm thing. That's what we first thought of. So we decided, okay, that makes sense. Let's think about it in a little bit more detail. And so we 3D modeled here. We have a couple of 3D models. Uh, we tested it in a physics engine to see if it would open up when placed at a certain angle and so on. We uh, did our research. We talked to waste management and we talked to them about how they acquire their trash cans, uh, you know, how much they pay for them, what kind of material it's made out of. And we ended up with dimensions. We ended up with the material we want to use. We ended up with a cost estimation and so on. And eventually we built a, we didn't have plastic available to us. So we built a wooden prototype, but we also built a uh, mini plastic prototype that we were able to test and, uh, you know, play around with. Eventually we did find out that we needed to improve on our design slightly. And so we ended up doing that. But that was how we went through the engineering design process to create this pretty cool product. And it's something that we're continuing to develop right now. So as for your build challenge, well, it's quite simple. There's no build challenge video this week because it shouldn't be necessary because you get to build anything. Of course, there's, there's still a downside or an upside, I suppose. We want you to demonstrate the engineering process. So we want to, if you build a skyscraper, you know, what, how, what was your ask step? What was your create step? You know, all these things, we want them nicely laid out and we want to see who can follow this process closely. Of course, the more point, the more dedication, effort and creativity you have, the more points you're going to get. And 
Again, it should be something that's really exciting since it's such an open-ended challenge. Anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.